Hello, my name is Adrian Richards. I'm a plastic and cosmetic surgeon um, and the surgical director of Aurora Clinics. This is one of a part of a series of videos I'm going to be doing on common hand pathology, um, particularly instructing you on how to do injections to cure the uh, common uh, problems you get in the hand of trigger finger, carpal tunnel syndrome and de Quervain's tenosynovitis. So the first one I'm going to be doing today is carpal tunnel. Um, syndrome. Now, I couldn't unfortunately find anyone in the office who was happy to uh, have their hand uh, treated. So I've got a, a rubber hand here and I'm going to be showing you on the rubber hand how to inject the carpal tunnel. First of all, let's just look at some anatomy on the wrist. This tendon here, which is on the uh, base of the thumb, on the thumb side of the wrist, is called the flexor carpi radialis. That's the FCR tendon. This tendon on the ulnar side of the wrist is called the flexor carpi ulnaris, and it's here. Uh, that's the tendon you really get when you grip, you can really feel it tense up here. That's the FCR. Now in the middle is the palmaris longus. Again, okay, and not everyone has a palmaris longus. About 20% of people do not have this tendon. The way you test for this tendon is you ask uh, people to um, grab between their thumb and little finger and bend their wrists. And can you see here, can you see my palmaris longus is sticking out? Okay. Don't know if you can see that. So that's my flexor carpi radialis, ulnaris over there. And then when I do that, can you see that tendon sticking out? That is the palmaris longus. And as I said, 80% of people have that. So moving on, flexor carpi radialis here, flexor carpi ulnaris on the other side, palmaris longus, which you may or may not have. Now, the median nerve, comes between the flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, it moves it in there, okay, moves up into the hand. And as we know, the uh, median nerve supplies the thumb, index, middle, and half of the ring finger. So the thumb half of the ring finger supplies sensation to there, and it also supplies the nerve supply, the muscle supply, to the thenar eminence, which is this uh, bit of muscle here which is apparently, if you're a cannibal, this apparently is the tenderest mu muscle to eat in the human body. Uh, I'm not suggesting you do that, but that is apparently the case. Right, so the median nerve comes up here, it gives a motor branch here, which supplies this muscle, it supplies the sensation here. If it's squashed, it's squashed in the carpal tunnel, and the carpal tunnel lies between here and here. And, and basically the carpal bones are arched, on the back, and then all the tendons and nerves that go to the fingers go through this tunnel and to keep them all down you've got a layer over the um, uh, carpal tunnel and that's called the flexor retinaculum and that keeps everything down um, nicely. And so the flexor retinaculum lies in this position here. Okay, and it's the nerve, the nerve which is going to all these fingers here, the median nerve is squashed here as it passes from the wrist to here, it's squashed. That's what gives you carpal tunnel syndrome, which is characterized by tingling in the hand, particularly at night, um, relieved by shaking. And also, if it's nerve squashed for a long time, you can get a weakness in the muscle here, so this muscle can flatten out. So what you need to look for is a flattening out in this area, a depression in that area, rather than a big, sort of round, full thenar eminence, a bit of a depression here. Okay. Where are you going to inject to relieve carpal tunnel syndrome? Well, we're going to inject a small amount of steroids. I normally inject one mil of lignocaine, uh, plain lignocaine, and one mil of 10 milligrams per milligram um, triamcinolone. And you can either inject that way, or you can inject that way. And my preference is to inject that way, because if the patient pulls their arm away suddenly, they're going to pull it that way, and you're not going to go into the nerve. Um, and if the steroid gets under the uh, fascia in this layer, um, it's going to spread down to the carpal tunnel. So I'll be showing you how to do that injection in a second. So the first stage is to mark where you want to inject. So I'm going to inject between the flexor carpi radialis and the palmaris longus, so really just there. Next stage, clean the skin with an alcohol swab. Okay, so everything's sterile. And you want to do this with a no-touch technique because you don't want to get any potential um, uh, you know, bugs in the carpal tunnel. Now I like to just give a little bleb of local anaesthetic first into the skin because it's a little bit tender during the uh, procedure. So I would just go through 
the skin uh, with uh, my lignocaine and just a little bleb where you're going to inject. Okay, and that is going to reduce the pain um, when you actually have the injection because there'd be no sensation through the um, skin. So I always like to do it with the uh, orange needle because um, I think the smaller the needle you can do it with better, you know, less painful, less trauma for the patient. I've got two mils in there, one mil of, lignin, of local anesthetic lignocaine, one mil of uh, triamcinolone, 10 milligrams per mil. It doesn't really matter what um, steroid you use, um, just use whatever's familiar to you. Bevel of the needle up, numbers on the syringe towards you, gloves on, sterile skin, we're all ready to go. So just pop through here, if you just pop through, you go through the skin and then you feel the next layer is under the fascia of the uh, forearm. Now if you get any pain going up the fingers or any twitching in the fingers, it's likely you've hit the nerve, so pull out. Okay. Um, but as you pop through, you should just pop through, and this fluid should go in really, really easily. Now, if there's any resistance, you're in the wrong level. Basically, it's a car, it's a tunnel um, with things going through it. It's a potential space. The fluid should go in really easily. Now, it won't go in very easily because this isn't the real hand, but basically pop in, make sure there's no twitching, no pain. If you get twitching and pain, you're in too far, so don't do that, and then inject the fluid nice and gently and it should go in really really easily well that won't in his hands because um, it's a false hand and then reject out pressure on there elevate the hand of, for the patient always with any hand procedures elevate the hand and less bruising and swelling uh, there wait a couple of minutes talk to the patient ask them to move their uh, fingers to disperse the local anesthetic up and down the uh, carpal tunnel and that's it really. You probably get um, relief um, pretty much immediately because of the local anaesthetic. That's only going to last a, a, an hour. Um, and then for the next couple of days, probably won't notice too much because the uh, uh, steroids take a little bit of time to uh, work. Um, but you know, the next few days, they should notice a decrease in the swelling of the synovium around the um, tendons. So basically, the steroids reduce the inflammation, reduce the swelling around the um, tendons and then by reducing that swelling they make more room in the tunnel so they relieve the pressure on the carpal tunnel and I really only recommend that you do carpal tunnel injections three times no more than that if it comes back after three times you need to consider surgery